Hey, well, welcome to this week's episode. This is part two of my three part mini series where I try to reimagine different moments in movies that I really like from the Ghibli universe. Previous episode, I took a pass on Kiki, and for this one, I wanted to focus on Spirited Away. It's a movie I really like, and it's I've done fan art previously for this movie as well, of certain things I really liked about the movie and certain moments. Uh, but I want to try something different. I also looked a lot at the art book first, The Art of Spirited Away. I purchased it a long time and there's so much cool art in it and I try to see, uh, try to pull some inspiration from it. And the moment I personally really liked and I wanted to do my own spin on it was when Chihiro is at the brink of entering the spirit realm. Her pants just wall straight into the red building which essentially is like the gate to enter the spirit world and she's kind of hesitant. Uh, and I really wanted to reinterpret that moment from maybe a different camera angle to show off the whole building and just do it my own interpretation. With that said, I think we can just stop painting. And actually with this image, I started in my sketchbook, as you can see very faintly, and I did went over it with markers. I was gonna share it in the first place, but I completely messed it up with a marker and ended up getting really messy. And as I kept trying to fix it, it just got worse and worse. So I decided I'm not gonna show that. I'm just gonna put it on low opacity and draw on top of it. Because at the end of the day, I did like some of the compositional layout. I just completely messed it up. And that's the kind of nice thing with digital. You can just paint on top of it. And I did want to start in by trying to indicate what's going to be in the shadow, what's going to be in the light. I want to cover up all the white as well. But I'm also thinking of it as sort of an underpainting. Whatever colors I lay on top of now, I'm going to try and paint on top of it and use that as I work forward. Because based on, I noticed whatever colors you put in as your underpainting, it really helps influence the overall overall image and the kind of feel of it uh, and specifically for like sunny scenarios light sunny days orange as an underpainting and yellows really work well um, I've tried some other colors like bright pinks bright blues just see how it feels doesn't quite work with sunny lighting scenarios uh, so I like the orange I'm gonna keep the selections as well uh, because I have all the orange on a separate layer and all the yellow on another layer So it's really easy to try and paint stuff in the shadow and the light later on I am gonna merge it all but for now I just needed to separate separate out things and better clarify the forms and the shapes that we have here And one thing I like to do with my process as well. I try to very early on uh, establish how, what is the general colors the general lighting and the overall feel of the image pretty early as you can see here if you squint your eyes you kind of get a feel of how the overall image is going to feel where the major lighting is going to be what's going to be in the shadow where the character is placed i like to paint the character at the very end because when i feel more comfortable in the environment that's when i like to do the character um, but i also like to keep a placeholder for where i want the character to be and I'm also using some of my new brushes that I made. I'll be sharing these when I feel more comfortable uh, that the set is complete. It's still lacking a bit in some of the texture that I want and some of the type of brushes. But when that is ready, I'll put it up and share it with you all so you can acquire it as well. And as I'm drawing the foliage in this image, I love to look at the art book, which is such a great resource to have at this point as well. And try to see how the artists who worked on the movie were also interpreting foliage and shapes. Because it's really fun when drawing nature to see how other people like to do it and then try to give your own spin, trying to pull some inspiration from the real world as well and finding ways of simplifying and indicating the shapes. Because I think especially when you're drawing something like a nature scene or a forest scene where there's a lot of detail and texture, you have to pick and choose your battles. What do you want to emphasize and what do you want to let it fall back? And it's a balancing act of Pull, pushing things forward that creates contrast and pulls attention to it and putting things further back that doesn't pull attention and as you can see for instance here you have kind of like an area that's a pretty big shadow it's just really choosing how much do we want to show there I in in my choice in my case I chose to overemphasize things that are above it things that are hanging down over it and try to leave things in the shadow more muted and not so much detail as a whole and it's kind of uh, of a thematic and rule I use across almost the entire painting even at the entrance as well you see there's not really much detail or or anything it's just very dark contrast and throughout the whole process I kept it pretty dark 
because I didn't want to add too much noise and detail in there. And I think that's also important whenever you are making your artworks and painting is choosing where you want to emphasize the shapes and details and choosing areas where you want to push it back. Because I think if you have things that fall back and things that come forward, it'll make the things that come forward stand out even more rather than trying to detail the whole thing because then it ends up getting pretty overwhelming at times. And I feel like the image is getting in a pretty good state. We have the overall layout of the image, the lighting is working, the colors are working, and that's why I start feeling more comfortable considering jumping into the character because the the layout of the of the image is pretty solid. And with the character as well, when drawing Chihiro, I wanted to keep her pretty simple because she's really small in the image. I just want to get her silhouette to pop and I also placed her in front of the really dark entrance. So she's going to create a lot of contrast. She's also very centralized in the image, so she's going to stand out a lot, even though she's really small in the image. And it's important because without her, it might be hard to determine the scale of the image. So kinda, she kind of also works as a scale cue and a storytelling element. Because again, we're referencing the end when she enters, her parents enter this area, so it's important that we do show her. I was thinking of showing her parents as well as they're running into the to the pathway but I decided to leave it out and just leave her kind of looking at there a bit scared of what to do but with that said uh, I think we're done with the painting so thanks again for watching thank you so much for watching the episode I hope you enjoyed it again this was part two of three next week will be the last one in this mini series for the studio Ghibli thematic after that I have something pretty exciting that I want to share as well uh, but I'm also curious for next week I haven't quite decided which movie to do there's some that I'm leaning more towards I'm curious what are your thoughts which one do you prefer the most uh, and is there a certain moment in those movies that you like and would like me to see I do a reinterpretation of or do my own spin on let me know in the comment section below and I also want to wish you a wonderful Friday and I'll see you next time have a great weekend bye